and if you are watching us on Facebook Live right now or later, we're glad to have you. Let's get started with some worship. I heard an old, old story, how a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. Welcome. We are Christ Point Community Church, and we are so excited to have you with us. If you're watching on Facebook Live, if you will go ahead and hit that like button and the share button uh, so we can get the gospel out this morning. Uh, you can even start a watch party if you want to. Let's continue in worship.
of your goodness. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be Jealous for his own, none could comprehend his love and his mercy. Our God is exalted on his throne, high above the heavens, forever he is worthy. And we will keep our eyes. Heavenly Father, we just praise your name this morning, Father. We thank you for that all-consuming fire that burns within us, Father. And I pray that that fire would just rage and that you would set it ablaze and that we, Father, would just be empowered to go and to tell as we are called to, Father. Father, we are living in such weird times right now, Father. But this is a perfect time for us to just, for us to be still. 
but for us also to just spread your spread your word, Father. And I pray that you would just give us the courage. But more than that, I pray that you would just give us the opportunity to share the gospel with those that are around us. And so, Father, I just pray that you would continue to move in this place, that you would move virtually, that you would move in this drive-in, Father, and that you would just speak to our hearts right now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen. Good morning. Can you hear me? All right, all right. Feel free to use that horn this morning as your uh, amen button. Um, <laughs> it's uh, my pleasure, of course, this morning to bring you the Word of God uh, uh, and to challenge you in the name of Christ, to be everything that he has called you to be. We're so thankful that you came to join us this morning. We're thankful for those who are joining us via live stream. And we are so thankful for this beautiful day that we have been given. You know, it's good for the body of Christ to come together and worship and celebrate the Lord. This morning, the message title is, You're Not Called to Be Safe, But Good. I was watching one of my favorite podcasts this past week. It's called The Sword and the Trial. It's put out by the Founders Ministries. And uh, they had a very excellent discussion uh, regarding uh, this very subject. And it, it really stirred my heart concerning the world uh, that we now live in, and I, I hope that you you will receive the the message this morning and the faithfulness that it is delivered. I, I must confess to you this morning that I'm a somewhat of a sci-fi and a fantasy book and movie lover. One of my favorites is the Chronicle of Narnia by C.S. Lewis, uh, and. Uh, that latest book, The Lion, the Witch, and the, and the Wardrobe. And in this fictional series, it's filled with, with talking animals, child heroes, and a wonderful depiction of, of good versus evil. And it's well known that the book is a portrait of, of Christ and the life that he has called us to. And in this book is a character a lion named uh, Aslan, and Aslan is a depiction of Christ. Now, as the children have only recently made their way into this fictional world of, of Narnia through the wardrobe, they meet the agents of, of, of Aslan, which happens to be a talking beaver and his wife. And Susan, a character in the, in the story, asks about the person of Aslan. And I'd like to read you a snippet of what uh, Mr. Beaver says in answer to her question. He says, Aslan is a lion. He is the lion. He is the great lion. Oh, said Susan. I thought he was a man. Is he quite safe? I shall feel rather nervous about meeting a lion. Safe, said Mr. Beaver. Who said anything about safe? Of course he isn't safe. But he's good. And he is the king, I tell you. This one simple paragraph uh, gives us a, a wonderful picture of the incredible strength and goodness of Christ our Lord. A lion that's so big, so, so powerful, so strong, so virulent, so mighty. You know, I've seen pictures and watched videos of, of lions who've made friends with, with humans. And they can be so tender and so gentle, so loving desiring to, to touch, to play, to show and receive even affection. 
but they aren't tame. With a lion, even one that's raised in constant contact with humans, even the best animal trainer will tell you that they are always wild and you must stay alert around them because as playful and as gentle as they may appear at any moment, they can turn and they will become the most ferocious thing that you have ever seen. And you have absolutely no chance if you stand opposed to them empty-handed. You know what? Christ is the same. He's not safe, but He is good. There's nothing that is safe about the life of Christ. And there is nothing as great nor ferocious to stand opposed against Him. Christ was born into this world for the express purpose of giving His life for the sins of man. Nothing safe about that. Christ referred to Himself as the ransom for many in Matthew 20, 28. And this morning, I would like to use, if you have your Bibles, you can turn to 1 Timothy chapter 2. And we're going to look at verses 1 through 7. This will be the foundation of the message this morning. Is I want us to be reminded that just as Christ was not safe but good, so ought we be. Now here Paul is writing to young Timothy with the direction reminding him of our primary, of the primary directive in the Christian life. We'll look at verse 1. He says, first of all then, I urge that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all those who are in authority, so that they may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. This is good and it pleases God our Savior. So there is a, a regard and respect for our earthly authority, and we should regard and heed um, their direction. Christ himself instructed us to render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. Now, Caesar represented the supreme governmental authority to the land. Today, our governmental authority lies not with man, but in a document. That document is the Constitution of the United States of America. The job of the President, of the House, of the Senate, of, of our Supreme Court. In fact, uh, the job of every government authority is to execute its position by way of that Constitution. In light, let's be honest this morning, in light of our current situation it seems that many feel, they feel free to cast this document aside and in doing so also cast your rights, my rights aside. And this puts our citizens, especially God's church, in a forced predicament between obeying the instruction of man, not the law, but an order by man versus the direction of our Lord. Now this issue has been greatly tested uh, over the past two to three months and, and rest assured it's going to be tested further in the future. But right now churches are being pushed into a corner and the limits of our religious freedom have been tested. My concern is that we are being climatized for the future. We've been instructed to be Christ-like. Therefore, there is nothing safe about us. But we are on the side of righteousness. We are good. Does not being safe, then, does that mean that we are a threat to the world? No. 
Absolutely not. It means that we have a greater uh, interest in the world at heart. That our fear of not fulfilling our mission, our calling, overpowers our fear for our own safety. But then the accusation arises. Well then, you obviously do not care for the safety of others and who might uh, transfer this sickness to someone else. I realize that portions of what I may say this morning may disturb some folks, but I'm just going to give you the truth. That's all I can do. Honestly, folks, we need to wake up. You need to understand this morning that you are being hoodwinked. And many are being controlled and manipulated by fear. Fear of death and dying. And I'm not saying this lightly. In fact, quite frankly, over the past few months, God has led me to change my position. And I admit this morning that at, at first I was one of the, the alarmists. I told people we need to, to, to take precautions, and we did. We still do, certainly. I stated early on that this was something that we needed to uh, watch uh, seriously and make ready for the, the possibilities of extremely high deaths. But let's be honest this morning, it simply hasn't proved out. It hasn't proved to be uh, uh, true. And we'll talk about that more in just a moment. Because these facts and observations are are what have changed my position and pushed me to become um, bolder for the sake of the church. I bring you this message. Now listen to me this morning. I'm not promoting uh, anyone to be reckless. But I'm saying this. I'm saying we cannot and should not be motivated by fear and allow our worship and our mission to become derailed or made to look unnecessary. Our faith is essential. And all the tenets of our, faiths are, of our faith are essential. Folks, we do not have the luxury to pick and choose which portions of God's teachings we will or will not follow. Amen. Yet, yet today we are allowing fear to do exactly that. It's overriding rationality and exempting, our, exempting the civil liberties granted to us by the supreme authority of this nation, our Constitution, obeying the order of man and resisting the instruction of God because we desire to be safe. What's more, I'm, I'm very concerned because... I'm very disturbed because I see little outrage over these issues coming from our so-called authorities of the faith. In fact, from what I've seen, the vast majority have defended the orders of the state. And I ask you this morning, where is the outrage from our churches and our church leaders concerning this matter? Um, I, I would ask them this morning, why aren't they crying out on behalf of our church? Has, our, has the desire to be safe reconciled us to our liberty of faith to be declared non-essential? We're okay with that? Folks, whether you realize it or not, 
we live in a very pivotal moment in our history as a nation, and it will carry consequences. Freedom lost, listen to me, freedom lost in times of crisis are rarely, if ever, recanted. You can look at 9-11 to see that. We awaken today to a, a, a new nation granting more authoritarian power than the Constitution allows. And this morning I say that enough is enough. Listen to these facts. Did you know this? Now, now I went and pulled these statistics from the National Safety Council's website. In the U.S. right now, you have a 14% chance of, of dying from heart disease or cancer. You have a 12% chance of dying from a fall. You have a 0.27% chance of dying by homicide. You have a 0.87% chance of dying in a car accident. And listen, a 0 0.057% chance of dying from COVID-19. And finally, you have nearly a 100% chance of dying for any reason that I've named being labeled as COVID-19. Now that last point was a bad joke. But if you're going to, the point is, look, if you're going to fear this virus, if it's going to control uh, your life, well, then in that case, you, by very example, by the very model that many are currently living, then you shouldn't drive a car. You shouldn't own a gun, and you should never, ever climb a ladder because your danger of dying from one of those causes is from anywhere from five to 200 times greater than from dying from COVID-19. But let's be honest this morning. You're, we're not presented real numbers related to this virus because they've been manipulated and inflated for both political and financial gain. I heard a doctor in a Minnesota state representative interviewed the other day, and he gave the example where a guy is hit by a truck, and his lung collapses, and in the ER he expires from respiratory failure. Later, the blood work came back, showed that he was positive for COVID-19. Guess what's listed on the death certificate as cause of death? COVID-19. Furthermore, the Center of Disease Control has actually encouraged physicians to list COVID as a cause of death if the individual was confirmed to have just been around someone with COVID or if they had COVID-related symptoms whether there was a confirmed diagnosis or not. Another uh, representative, a congressman who is also a physician, wrote this. He said, as a physician, I received an email last week from the Department of Health coaching me on how to fill out death certificates. And I've never, I have never received coaching for, from the Vital Statistics Agency in terms of how to do, to fill out a death certificate. Basically, I felt they were saying, you know, you don't have to have a confirmed laboratory test for COVID-19 in order to make the death certificate COVID-19. Folks, how can we trust the diagnosis when emergency federal aid given to hospitals based, are based upon the number of COVID cases that are diagnosed in that hospital? Doesn't it stand to reason that they would list death any death they possibly could as COVID, especially when the CDC is recommending it. You know, money is a powerful motivator. Folks, come on. Can you see that there's something else going on here? It's not about our safety. 
It's about creating fear so that they might control and manipul manipulate the public. It's about the creation of a narrative to be used to mislead us. It's about creating government dependency. I beg you this morning, I beg you to, to think for yourself, to think logically, to be realistic. Come on now, we've shut down our nation for a virus that has a 0.057% chance of causing death. <laughs> and it's gotten, it's gotten crazy. Just this week, I watched a videotape by a woman as two police officers came to her door and very rudely, with verbal abuse, threatened her because her eight- and nine-year-old daughters were actually outside playing with the neighbor's kids. Seriously. They threatened her because her children were playing outside in the yard. Come on. Here's what's more disturbing. The police came because another name, neighbor ratted them out, picked up the phone, called, turned them in. I understand there are other areas in the nation where they've created secret hotlines where you can report someone for not even wearing a mask. What's happening to us when as a nation neighbors are calling and ratting out their own neighbors for just being outside, doing what we should be doing, being loving and concerned neighbors, fellowshipping one with another. Where is the logic? Where is the reason? Beaches today are being closed even when the CDC itself says that sunlight and heat kills the virus. Yet you're being told to stay at home. Am I the only one that's scratching my head here? I mean, these are, you know, these are those things that make you go, hmm. Now, some might say this morning that, well, Brian, you know what, buddy? You're a pastor, and you're simply not supposed to discuss politics or political matters from the, from the pulpit. Well, to that, I would say this. Listen, it's, it's my job to shepherd the sheep that God has given to me. And when truth and facts are presented, which may have spiritual implications... I believe that I and every other pastor out there that does not speak to it are being derelict to the calling that they have been placed in. Surely there must be a more sensible and libertarian solution to this problem. And let's be clear this morning, I'm not making light of deaths. And yes, this virus can cause death. Most likely when it does cause death, it's because it's just one more layer on a long line of list of complications that someone else is, is, is suffering from. And so yes, we should protect and we should isolate the most vulnerable people and allow uh, the rest of society to go on as usual, practicing whatever social distancing they choose to practice. But we certainly must make decisions based on the best information that we have available, and those in authority should not use such situations like this to create political fodder. 
We're going to move on in just a moment. But one more thing. You probably aren't aware, but the CDC just released a report, and it actually demonstrates that the average daily death rate in the United States has actually decreased since the beginning of the stay-at-home orders. And you might say, well, there you go. You see, it's working. No. No, that's not what that says. The average daily death rate has also decreased dramatically in comparison to 2017, 18, and 19. So what does this say to us? It says that COVID-19 has not impacted the average daily death rate in the U.S. in any significant way. Except that it's decreased the average daily deaths because people are now staying at home and are not putting lives in harm's way. So you're not having those homicides. You're not having those deaths by fall. But you probably didn't hear that in the, the news that we watch every day. They ignored it. They're part of that political narrative. I want you to understand this morning that we live in a society of liberty and freedom. And it's because of, of false and exaggerated information which has been used to cause fear that we... Uh, Seemingly, are, so many are ready to cast that aside, to cast those rights aside. So this is why Paul instructs us to pray for our authorities and our rulers. Now let's revisit what he said. Remember we're in uh, chapter 1 of, of uh, excuse me, 1 Timothy chapter 2. And he says this, I urge that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all those who are in authority, so that we may lead a tranquil and a quiet life in all godliness and dignity. We pray for them just as we would pray for everyone else, for petitions, for prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings. But for authority, we also pray one other thing. We pray for a specific reason so that we may lead a tranquil and a quiet life with godliness and dignity. We pray that they might come to repentance and come to the Lord because it seems there are those that are in positions of authority that are obviously hostile toward God and His people. And Timothy and Paul were ministering to people who were under the rule of the Roman Emperor Nero. Nero was one of the greatest persecutors of Christians in all of history. But even then, Paul teaches, Paul is teaching was that we should and must respect authority and seek to lead a quiet, uneventful life with it. Now, in the day of Nero, that often meant retreat. That meant hiding and fleeing. But we live under the rule of the governance of the U.S., the U.S. Constitution, not one single man. So we have a voice. But regardless, because men are in positions of authority, Unfortunately, very often, their motives are abusive, they are unjust, they are uh, corrupt, and at best, they're, at very least, they're, they're questionable. So we pray in hopes that we would not enter into that type of situation. But even still, as Paul wrote to the, to the church of his day, and it was a very delicate situation, Yet even though they were forced to be careful, the church was still focused and centered upon its mission. And that was the purpose of his writing. To encourage Timothy, to motivate the church to fulfill its calling and mission. Even in the midst of their struggles. 
even in the midst of threats to their very lives, even in the midst of governmental hate. Paul goes on with the following comments. It pleases God our Savior who wants everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and humanity, Christ Jesus himself, human, who gave himself a ransom for all, a testimony at the proper time. For this, I was appointed a herald and an apostle. And I'm telling you the truth, I am not lying and a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and in truth. And thus the reminder that Christ was not safe. He gave himself as a ransom for all, and he desires that everyone would, would know the truth and that he is the only mediator between God and man. He met his death despite the risk to his life so that we might be saved. Let us also say, you know what, there's, no, there's nothing safe about Paul or the other apostles either. Paul understood persecution. He spent a lot of time in prison for his faith and suffered death for it. And since the days of the apostles, millions have been martyr, martyred for their faith in Christ. Persecution is a fact of life for the follower of Christ. And we need to understand something this morning. If this virus has shown us anything, it should demonstrate to us how easily we are ruled by fear and how the desire to be safe will destroy our liberty. This means our liberty to assemble. Our liberty to just have a cup of coffee in a coffee shop with a friend. Our liberty to shop in, an, in our own hometown store. What will we see next? What will we accept next? What rights will we release next? Will it be the immunization Gestapo? Will there be forced immunizations? in order to be able to go out in public at all? Sounds extreme, but you know what? There are folks out there who are proponents and who are promoting it. Of course, all of this is done out of concern for your safety and for the preservation of life. Don't buy into that. Can you see the overreach of, of control for your life? The insanity of such reasoning? Without question, folks, we should absolutely cherish this life. We should enjoy our lives and we should count it precious. I, personally, I like my life. I love my wife. I love my children. I love a, a, a beautiful 70-degree day. I love my church family, my friends. I love these blue skies, this light wind. And you know what? There's a lot of things I've, I've had the good fortune to see in my life, and there are still things that I want to see. There are things that I want to see again, and I hold this life dear, as I'm sure that you do. Absolutely, we want to protect the sanctity of this life. Just bear in mind that the vast majority of those wanting to lock down this nation and keep it on lockdown for your safety 
out of respect for your life, have zero respect for the unborn. Amen. On average, 1,700 babies a day are aborted in this nation. Where is their outrage for this life? Do you hear me? Are you beginning to wake up? Folks, we cannot, cannot abide this loss of our liberty. We cannot take this threat lightly. We must wake up. We must prepare ourselves. We must open our eyes and be awakened to this reality. A reality which threatens our ability to fulfill the calling which has been placed upon our lives as followers of Christ. So I ask you this morning, where is your outrage? Where are the cries of God's people lifted up throughout the land? And where are the cries in thankfulness for our salvation in Jesus Christ and our liberty to celebrate it? You may say this morning, well, I'm, I'm still meeting. I, 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 can, I can do drive-in church and, and I can watch online. I'm so thankful for that. I'm glad for that. I'm so appreciative of those who are here this morning and participating in, in ministry with us and celebration with us. I'm so happy that you're willing to engage in church. But let me ask you this morning, how... How are you demonstrating your desire that everyone would come to know the saving grace of Jesus Christ? How are you heralding the message of the gospel while content to dwell in the darkness of your home in solitude? I saw the most disappointing hashtag advertised on television the, the other day. It said, hashtag, alone together. Oh, please. Folks, the love and affection within the family of God is the same, if not greater, within the as though within the family of your home. And it functions best when personally demonstrated. When we come together and worship, then the real power of God is, is experienced and it's, it's felt. Encouragement is found. Inspiration is found. Love is, is put on display. Our personal sacrifice of, of corporate worship pleases the Lord. I read a newspaper article early this morning uh, which basically asked the question, is the handshake gone? I don't want to live in a world that I can't present a holy kiss. I don't want to live in a world that I can't Hug my brother. Went to Home Depot yesterday. Before that, I went to Walgreens. People are running around with masks on. If you want to wear a mask, that's your choice. But don't chastise me because I choose not to. I'm not going to live my life in fear, and I hope that you will not either. Because the truth is, is that we must sacrifice our safety in, uh, in order that others might know the truth. We cannot allow our freedom uh, of assembly, assembly to be recklessly called non-essential and simply accept that 
in fear. Now some are going to turn the tables on you and they're going to call you foolish and reckless, even dangerous. And I say to them, that's right. I am not safe. I follow my Savior Jesus Christ. He was not safe and I will not be either. I have no fear of death. Amen. So I ask you this morning, are you ready to cast aside and to abandon your fear, to faithfully serve the mission of our Lord? Maybe it's time that you cast aside your worries, your worries of this world, and accept and pronounce Jesus Christ as Lord of your life. Peter preached the gospel saying, Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin and receive the Holy Spirit. This morning Christ is knocking. The Holy Spirit is calling someone unto Himself. The question is, will you open the door? Will you release your fear and live the fullness, live out the fullness of of his primary directive that we make disciples and teach them to do all things that he has taught us. And I pray this morning that you uh, will be able to overcome this world. With the hope and the boldness of Christ and that you might be driven to rise up to rise up out of this hole that we've been driven into step out of the darkness and into the light I pray that you will come out and feel the sun on your face and know that the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. Will you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, Lord, help us now to open our eyes and to the depth of evil that exists in this world. Lord, help us that we would rise up and, and, and Lord, overcome darkness with, with the light of Christ. Lord, help us that we would not seek to be, be safe, but seek to fulfill our mission uh, to you at, uh, for you at all cost. Lord, above everything, I pray that if, if there is anyone who's heard this message this morning, and Lord, that they, they, they do not know Christ as, as Lord of, of, of their lives, Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit, Lord, would just fall heavily upon them and convict their hearts unto righteousness. Lord, this morning uh, we pray for our leaders and we pray that, um, Lord, that they would know your salvation and be convicted to lead according to your will. We ask that they might become servant leaders and models of faith in Jesus Christ. We pray that they would value the liberty of, Lord, of your people and seek to preserve it and even to, Lord, even to promote it. And Father, I pray for our spiritual leaders. I pray that they might become broken for you and less concerned about being politically co correct and Lord that they would cry out as representatives of your church Father we give you praise and honor and, and, and glory this morning for all that you have bestowed upon us and Lord we pray that we live our lives according to your will Father, I pray that you grant us strength in our weaknesses and humble our strength. And I pray this in Christ's holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. We thank you for joining us this morning. And I, I pray that you have been challenged 
and that you have been blessed by this message. Again, we want to invite you to maybe start a Facebook watch party and invite people to watch uh, this morning's service uh, with you, to share it, like it, leave your comments. Uh, let us. Obviously, it's, we can't go out and visit uh, with, with everyone. Um, so leave us a message and let us know that you were here. Most importantly, if you were moved this morning to uh, make Christ Lord of your life, then please um, send us a private message and let us know because we've got some information, some important information that we want to just put in your hands uh, so that you'll know what your next steps are. But once again, we thank you for joining us and we pray that you have a most excellent week in the Lord. Goodbye and God bless.